Okay, in this video, continuing with um, section 5.2 of chapter 5, um, how do you balance nuclear equations? So, make sure that the mass numbers on both sides, the total of the mass numbers are equal. So, 247 plus 4 equals 251. This is 251 here on the left side. Okay, so those are balanced. And then make sure the atomic numbers... Um, the totals of the atomic numbers are also equal. So 96 plus 2 equals 98, and it's 98 here on the left side, right? So here you have californium undergoing an alpha decay. And so how do you identify the new element? Um, 98 minus 2 is 96. 90, element number 96 is curium. And then its new mass is 251 minus 4, so that would be 247. So here in this alpha decay of uranium 92 becoming thorium, again, um, it's 90 plus the 2 gives you 92. And then 234 plus 4 gives you 238. All right. So the new element is two places to the left of the original element. All right. It's um, at atomic number has decreased by two, and its mass number has decreased by four. So how do you write these complete nuclear equation? All right. The first thing is to write down the incomplete nuclear equation determine what the missing atomic number is that's how you can identify the new element and then um, uh, determine what the missing mass is and then complete the equation so here you have americium 24195 giving you uh, undergoing alpha decay all right so the new element is 93 which is neptunium um, so 93 plus 2 would give you 95 and then the mass of this neptunium is going to be 241 minus 4 which is 237 so neptunium 93 237 would be the new element okay. so 93 237 in a beta decay the new element is one place to the right of the original element. That's because if you look at how do you balance um, an equation which undergoes beta decay, an element that undergoes beta decay, 7 minus 1 is 6, and then the mass remains the same. Okay. So here in potassium undergoing beta decay, the new element is to the right of potassium, that's calcium. So 20 minus 1, that's 19, and the mass is 42. So calcium, 42, 20. Um, again, cobalt, 27, is undergoing a beta decay. So um, the new element to the right of cobalt is nickel, nickel, 28, and the mass is 60. So nickel, 28, 60. In a positron emission, the new element is one place to the left of the original element, right? So, um, the atomic number has decreased by 1. So, 24 plus 1 gives you 25. Um, and then the mass stays the same. In a gamma radiation, it's the same element. The only thing is... It is very unstable, hence that um, the the M indicating it's metastable or unstable. And then once it loses that excess energy, the gamma rays, then it becomes stable. So the element on both sides is exactly the same. It's technetium-9943. So to summarize, alpha emitters, the new element mass has gone down by 4, atomic number has gone down by 2. Beta emitter mass is the same, but the atomic number is increased by 1. Positron mass is same, but atomic number is decreased by 1. And then um, 
from the gamma emitter from a less stable nucleus it becomes more stable so the nuclear reaction of boron 85 gives you beryllium 84 plus um, a positron so this is an example of a positron emission uranium 238 decays by emission of an alpha particle um, the product of this decay is thorium all right uh, we just saw that radon 222 decays to polonium 218 what is the process so 218 plus 4 is 222 so this is an alpha decay iron 56 decays to manganese 56 um, iron um, the manganese is one place to the right of iron and so this would be then an um, beta decay complete the following equations americium 241.95 and you get a 93 and 237 neptunium rubidium 3781 so this new element would be 38 element number 38 um, and element number 38 is strontium so it's going to be strontium 3881 iron 26 and cobalt 27 on the other side so this is going to be a uh, um, beta emission because it's um, 27 minus 1 will give you 26 and so it, the particle that is missing is E0 negative 1 okay so radioactive isotopes are produced when you have a stable nucleus and it becomes radioactive when you have a small particle that hits it or bombards it so this process um, converting a stable nucleus into an unstable nucleus um, is called as transmutation all right so you have a boron 10 5 it's very stable because the number of neutrons and protons are equal and then you bombard it with a helium particle and now you get nitrogen um, 13 7 so in order for nitrogen to be stable the number of neutrons and um, protons should match so it would have been nitrogen 14 7 but nitrogen 13 7 is unstable plus um, a neutron is also formed now this neutron can again continue the bombardment into yet another particle um, so this process is called as transmutation so in the balanced equation for the bombardment of nickel 58 by a proton um, so what do you get here what is the particle being produced here all right so um, the atomic number total is 29 so that would be 27 plus 2 would give you 29 so it would be cobalt and then the mass um, it's 59 but 59 minus the 4 that would be 55 okay so cobalt 55 27 what radioactive isotope is produced when a neutron bombards um, technetium 9843 releasing an alpha particle okay so um, 41 plus 2 would then give you 43 and then 98 plus 1 is 99 um, so 95 and um, 41 and 41 is niobium nb all right so um 95 41 niobium
Um, okay. Um, we talked about alpha decay already. And um, that completes um, section 5.2 of chapter 5 because we've gone through the rest of the slides. Um, we did these already. Right, so that ends this video.